to take care of our latch return wires. Now, at the moment, these are just momentary relay circuits. We can apply positive voltage to the base resistor of this upper NPM. We can turn the LED, our load, on, and we can keep this pulled to VCC and push the master reset and turn it off with all three of them. But we want to be able to push one of these momentary buttons up here and latch on that load, turn on that LED, and have that LED stay on until we push the master reset line or another one of these momentary buttons. In order to do that, we need to convert this relay circuit, or the, what we have built up until this point, into a latching relay circuit. We need to run a wire from the common pole on the left-hand side of our double pole, double toe relay, down to the collector leg of the upper NPNs. In each case, from the common pole down to the row in the breadboard that the collector leg of the upper NPN is located. We need to do that in each case. And then, we need to run a wire from the normally open contact pin on the upper left hand side of each relay. Run a wire from it down to where the emitter of the top NPN meets the collector of the bottom NPN in that row in the breadboard. Basically, we need to add our wire in such a way that it will serve as a bypass for this upper NPN. Once we energize the circuit, continuity develops from the collector to the emitter of that upper NPN, turning on the relay, and then once we release the momentary button, current still has a path that it can go through this side of the relay and bypass the upper NPN, keeping the circuit latched on. So let's add these wires. To determine where to connect the wires, as far as these rows, you can just lean the relay up and look underneath it. But for our purposes, I'll just take the spare relay. We can lay it on top and look at the rows that the common pole for this relay will be in this position. It'll be in this row. The normally open pole will be at the very top row of the relay. And there will be the common row. Let's add the wire. There's the first wire. I ran it from the common pole of this double pole, double three relay. We can lean it up. Maybe viewers can see that. But there's the common pin of the relay, given the internal structure of the relay I'm using. I have a piece of wire in the same row as the common pole, running down, ending up in the row that the collector leg of this upper end pin is located. We have a lot going to that row. We have this latch wire is in that row. The line from the coal of the relay is in that row, as well as this production diode, the cathode of it, is in that row. They're all in the same row of the breadboard. Next, we need wire from here down to this row in the breadboard where the emitter of the top NPN and the collector of the second NPN the row they share, we need to wire from this point up to that point. When completed, your board should look something like this with that first relay. You have one wire coming from the, from the normally closed pole on the left hand side of your relay all the way down to the row in the breadboard where the emitter leg of the first MPN shares a row with the collector leg of the second MPN where those two meet, your wire terminates in that row. And then we also have a wire from the common pole pin on the left hand side of this relay in that row to the row in the breadboard in which the collector leg of the upper end pin where it's located. With this wire as well as the cathode side of that protection diode. We need to repeat this for each of the other two circuits. Once complete, your board will look like this one, where we have a wire from the normally closed pole pin, the row in the breadboard that the normally closed pin of this relay is located. We have a wire from there to where the emitter of the upper end pin meets the collector of the second end pin, that row in the breadboard. And then we'll also have a wire from the common where the common pin of this relay on the left hand side is. We have a wire from there to where the collector 
pin of the upper end pin, the row and the breadboard that it's located. We have a wire there, and we have it with each of them. Now, you can do a test, add power to the circuit again, and take a jumper wire, and you shouldn't even have to plug it in. You should be able just to touch the base resistor of the upper end pin. Put one leg of your wire, you can just plug it into VCC, and you should be able to just touch the base resistor of the upper end pin, and it should turn on the red LED, and the red LED should stay on like that. You should be able to move, put your jumper wire one end in the VCC rail, and then touch just touch the leg of the base resistor to this upper end pin. The yellow LED should come on and stay on. And then repeat the exact same thing with the green LED. So you put your jumper wire in the VCC rail and then just touch it to the base resistor of the upper end pin. And see, I've put a wire in the wrong place. But I called it because I was doing the test. To turn these two off while we chase down the problem, you just push the master reset and it should unlatch those two. But let's figure out where I misplaced the wire. That one, if you look at it, is out of place. It needs to be down one more row in the breadboard. Now, when I touch this wire to the base resistor of this upper NPN, the green LED should light up and stay on. And it does. I just had this, the end of this wire one row too high, missing the row that the pin of this relay was located in. I didn't know that, but I discovered it through this test. Now I can repeat. I just go and push the master reset. That turns off all the LEDs. We want a clean run through where we can put one end of our jumper wire in the VCC rail, touch the base resistor for the upper end pin, the red LED comes on, stays on, and we can plug into the VCC rail with our jumper wire, touch the base resistor to that upper NPM. I jarred that relay. See how easy it is to make mistakes or accidents? It's accidental. We're trying to build it correctly, but accidents do happen along the way. All it takes is for a relay to be kind of cock-sided in there and not pressed all the way down for the circuit not to work. But we should be able to plug into the VCC rail and then touch to that base. And notice if we touch the base again and again it makes no difference to the LED or our load. Our load stays switched on. Then we can go to the VCC rail and touch the resistor to this upper NPM. And now they're all three latched on. This test is analogous to pushing one of these momentary buttons and having the relay circuit latch on and stay on. And then if we want to master reset, we should just be able to push this button and all of them go off. And they do. And I'm kind of glad that that error was caught on camera. I'll leave it in the footage so that people can see that it's real easy to miss placing a wire in the right row in the breadboard or to have a component turn sideways or not fully pushed in. That's real easy to do. In a circuit like this size, that's one of the great things about walking through each step of it, and that's the reason you test each one. If we had continued on and I hadn't caught that, I'd have all these wires, all those bird nest control wires running over this, and then I have to wonder what's wrong. Well, doing this test one at a time as we go helped me at least capture this wiring problem before we moved forward. But at this point, we can move forward. Let's look back at the schematic.